Hey everybody, hope you're having a great start to your new year. Today I'm going to be setting up my 2019 bullet journal, which I am so excited to finally do. I've been looking forward to setting up this journal for a while. Every year I get a new journal and I've had the Loistrom 1917 journal for the past three years, um, ever since I started bullet journaling. So I decided to get it again because I I'm so used to using this journal and I love it so much, so I stuck with the same um, brand and I just got it in gray this time, which has always been one of my favorite colors. I know that's kind of weird, but I love, love gray. So this year I wanted to decorate the front of my cover, so I'm actually going to be using my heat embossing tools to do that. Um, I didn't want to do it with ink because sometimes it may scratch off, so I'm going to go in with my Versa marker, which is kind of like a glue pen, and then I'm going to take my Ranger embossing powder in gold, and I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. So I'm going to put a lot of this powder on because I can always reuse it. I'm just going to make sure I cover all of the spots with the glue on it, so I'm just going to tap that back and forth. And then I'm just going to take a any really paint brush um, that doesn't have anything on it and I'm just going to wipe away the excess. And I like to do this over a white piece of paper because I can easily just fold it up and put it back into the bottle. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of detail by wiping away some of um, the gold with my pencil. Um, I'm just using it without the lead in it and it just makes it a little bit more detailed. And now it's time to take my heat embosser. The one that I use is by Paper Source, but there's a ton of different ones um, out there. But this one um, just is the one that works for me. And I'm just gonna kind of go over all of the gold embossing powder that I put on. And I'm gonna make sure that it's all melted. I absolutely love this part of um, heat embossing. It's so satisfying to do. And right after you can rub your fingers over it and it doesn't scratch off. So um, I just love this method of adding a little bit of gold or metallics to my journal. All right, so now that the cover's done, we can open it up and I'm gonna start planning my pages. So first things first, I gotta write my name on the front page of my new journal. And the next pages after that are just kind of like table of contents pages that you can fill out later. But I'm gonna start on the first blank page and I'm gonna bring out my little typewriter stamps. These were one of my favorite buys from the year. They are so cute and they're super easy to just put together and make words with. Um, and I use the Colorbox archival ink with it because it doesn't um, fade over time. So I'm just gonna dip that in and I'm gonna write 2019 on my front cover. I just wanted to do something really simple on the first page um, and I thought this was the perfect way to do it. Also, if you didn't notice, I'm putting all of the products I use in that little bar that shows up every once in a while. But in the description of the video, I'll have all of the links to all of these products I mentioned um, so that you guys can easily find them. But yeah, this is my cute and simple first page of my bullet journal. So last year I made a painting and a calendar for my first um, couple pages of my bullet journal and I wanted to do the same for this one. So I'm going to bring out some extra just mixed media paper um, and I'm actually going to be trying something new. I've never used gouache paint before. I've seen other artists use it and their paintings always turn out so bright and beautiful. So I'm going to try that out for this painting just to kind of try something new. And I just got some cheapo artist loft brushes from Michaels and you can find them on Amazon. I don't want to use my nice watercolor brushes for this because they're not meant for that. So I'm just going to use these and I'm getting this little plastic paint palette and I'm just going to put whatever colors look interesting to me. Um, I got the 24 count instead of the 10 count uh, gouache set 
because I wanted to try out all the different colors and I wanted to have options. But um, yeah, so far it looks really beautiful. And I'm just going to take out my little water bowl so that I can wash off my brushes and then we're going to start painting. Um, and I am using this washi tape to kind of uh, put a border around my painting. I'd probably suggest using a tape that's meant for this instead because sometimes it lifts the paper up a little bit, but if you don't have special tape to do that, then you can just use washi tape and um, peel it up very gently. So I'm just going in with a bunch of different blue and teal colors. At this point, I have no idea where I'm going with this painting. Usually I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to do, but at this point I'm just kind of trying the gouache out and seeing how... Um, to kind of work with it but yeah as you can see I just kind of wiped that whole thing away and then I came up with an idea to do a moon in the middle um, so I just took my Posca white paint pen and I'm just gonna fill in the center of that circle with um, some white gouache last year if you didn't notice I was kind of obsessed with drawing stars and the moon and um, so I kind of wanted to do the theme around that for this year. So I'm just starting out with a simple moon and I'm noticing that gouache is really really thick and it's a lot different from watercolor. <laughs> it's really nice though because if you put a layer down that you're not happy with you can easily just layer right over top of it since the paint is so thick. Um, so now I'm just doing little white splatters for stars around the moon and um, after that I'm just going to put a little bit more detail into my moon. So now my moon painting is done. I just waited for it to dry before peeling up the tape and I'm just making sure to be very careful while doing this so that the paper doesn't rip or anything. Some of my goals for this year are to try a bunch of new things, um, whether it be in art or different hobbies that I haven't really tried. So I thought doing this gouache painting for the first painting of my bullet journal would be the perfect way to start out my journal. Okay, so now I have scanned my painting and I sent it over to my iPad into a app called Procreate. And I'm just using the studio brush pen to do the lettering for um, the painting. And I wanted to write the word dream on it because it kind of goes along with the starry moon theme. And I'm just going to send that over to my computer and print it out. I have the printer scanner that I use uh, linked down below in my description, but it's called the Canon MX922 and it works really well for me, so I've been using it for like the past uh, couple years now. And I just used my handy paper cutter to cut out the painting, and now I'm gonna start the other side of the page, which is going to be the calendar. And I kinda want it to match with the theme, so I'm going to go for a kinda like starry theme. First I'm gonna bring out my Decadent Pies watercolor palette, I've been loving this palette lately. They have some really, really pretty colors, but my favorite is um, both of the blue colors, which I'm going to use for the lettering of the months. So now I'm just gonna take out my laser ruler, um, which I love while doing calligraphy on paintings or any artwork that I'm doing. I hate putting pencil lines on my paper and then having to erase the lines, so this is the perfect thing to kind of get around that. Doing lettering with watercolor and a paintbrush is actually pretty difficult. I can't usually do this with just any paintbrush. The one that I'm using is the only one that I can really letter with. It's the Winsor & Newton, um, I think it's the size one um, paintbrush and it's the only one that works for me to do lettering so if you're having trouble with it it's not just you don't worry another thing you can do is get the watercolor brush pens that they sell at the store and you can dip that in some of your watercolor and do it that way um, whatever works the best for you 
And so I just wrote 2019 on top, but I kind of hated the lettering, so I'm actually gonna redo it later when I scan it to my computer, but it works for now. So I'm just going to do a bunch of stars around the outside. I'm doing it with some black pen and some gold pen to kind of get some shine in it too. And then I'm basically done with this little calendar. I love the look of the watercolor lettering and I kind of tried to make sure that some of the letters were a little bit different from the ones next to it by either adding a little bit more color or a little bit more water. And then of course I had to use the gold in there too to make it a little shiny. But yeah, I love how both of these um, paintings turned out. I actually ran out of my Tombow dual-sided tape. I usually would use it to paste it in, but um, it's coming in literally tomorrow, so gonna have to wait one more day because it's my favorite tape to use and I don't want to use like real tape. But yeah, I love how these two pages go together and I'll actually have them um, both in my Etsy shop by the time this video goes up. So you can find them there if you want to hang it on your wall or put it in your journal um, as well. So now I'm going to start some new pages and uh, last year I did this little monthly um, I don't know what you would call it, like kind of like a log of each month and the days that go along with it, um, just so that I can put any important dates that I want to see coming up on these two pages. Oh yeah, I think I called it a future log last year, yeah. So this will be my future log for this year. Um, and each one of those little circles I did with my Ecoline watercolor brush pens which I've been really loving lately. They have these little sets that are really cute that um, I got from, I think from Amazon. Um, and they are just the perfect way to put in a little bit of color without breaking out my whole watercolor palette every time. And I'm just writing each month with my Uniball white Signo pen. Um, and I'm gonna do this on both pages, but this page is gonna be kind of like a galaxy theme. The first year I used a future log, I loved it and I used it all the time and for some reason in my past journal I didn't really use it at all. Um, I think I just kind of forgot about it, but this year I want to actually be able to use it so, so that I can reference any important dates I need to remember and also it's kind of a cool way to uh, see all of the different things that happened in one year. So now I'm going to do this page, which is going to be kind of like a blush um, floral page. And these are like the two themes that I tend to gravitate towards to, either florals or kind of like a starry um, night kind of theme. So I wanted to use those both for my setup. And to do the lettering for each month, I used my favorite uh, brush pens that I like to do for simple brush lettering, and they're called the Tombow Fudonosuke brush pens. I think they're definitely one of the best brush pens to use when you're first starting out lettering, um, and they're just so simple and crisp, and I just love them a lot. Alright, so I'm just finishing up my future log and then I'm going to move on to the next pages. So I don't expect to use these pages a lot, so I'm not going to put a ton of time into them, but it's always nice to write out whatever goals I have for the year and kind of be able to reference back to them if I need to or if I want to kind of get some inspiration. So I'm going to make this page and on the right side I'm going to do a bucket list page of maybe places I want to go or things I want to do. So um, yeah, these two pages I'm not putting a ton of time and effort into. I'm just going to make it really simple. 
All right, and those are all of the pages I'm doing for my 2019 initial bullet journal setup. Now I'm gonna get into my planning of January and I want to do a little bit of watercolor and a little bit of gouache. So I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray watercolor tube and I'm going to use that with a little bit of the blues from the palette I used before. And I'm just gonna coat the entire paper with this and you guys know I love my blues and my grays, um, so I wanted to do my first painting of January with these colors. And I'm actually going to take out that paper source heat embossing tool that I used before and I'm going to use it to uh, dry out the paint a little bit so that I don't have to wait a ton of time for it to dry. And this is how the painting turned out before I do the gouache part of it. So now I'm going to take out my gouaches again. And I'm actually using this clear paint palette this time. Um, it's hard to use this paint palette with watercolors, but it's really good for uh, saturated paints like gouache. So I wanted to do some roses for my painting and I wanna make them a little bit messy, not super detailed or anything, but I definitely struggled with this first rose because I'm not super familiar with gouache yet so I don't really know how the texture goes down but it's super thick and you can definitely layer it um, but sometimes it can get a little bit too layered so I kind of wiped off a layer and started fresh and I'm kind of getting the hang of it as I go and I'm trying to use definitely like some darker purples and reds to fill in um, the shadows of the petals. I chose to do more messy looking roses because I knew I would be way too stressed out if I was trying to make a rose look um, perfect and super detailed. This is my first time using gouache so I didn't want to get too ahead of myself. So I'm just having fun with it and I'm kind of learning as I go. So I'm just finishing up my last rose and then I'm going to take some black paint and I'm going to go in and do some of the petals for the roses. And for some reason my camera stopped recording at one point but I made this mistake on the left side you'll see in a second um, where I did like a big blob basically <laughs> and I just covered it up with another rose. Um, gouache is like really really thick so just went right over it and I didn't have to worry about it. But yeah that's the good thing about using gouache opposed to watercolors. Watercolors is kind of hard to layer without seeing the underneath part of it so um, it was really easy just to fix that little mistake. And now I'm just using another small black brush pen and I'm just doing some little wispies and um, details and this is how my flower painting turned out. So now just like with the other painting, I sent it to my iPad and I'm going to add the lettering in for January as well as the little calendar at the bottom. So I'm gonna do that and I already have the calendar set up so usually I just paste it in there. But, but yeah, digitizing all of my artwork this year has been a great way to be able to keep my original paintings intact. Um, I just love keeping the originals without the lettering on top so I like putting it into Procreate and doing it this way. So now I just hit the little share icon and I'm air dropping it to my computer and I'm printing it out and it actually turned out really, really beautiful as a print. I was kind of worried that the gouache wouldn't come up kind of like as textured as the original, but the scanner actually did a really good job of capturing all the details. 
So before I paste that painting into my journal, I'm going to do the important date section that kind of goes along with it. I do this every single time and I just have been loving it. So um, I'm going to make this little important date section that will kind of match it on the other side of the page. And I'm just going in with the same colors that I used before and then I'm going to use the same gouache paint that I was using as well. And I'm gonna just do a cute little rose in the corner um, to match the original. And once I finished adding all the small little details, this is how my little roses turned out. I'm so glad that I got to try gouache for the first time and I definitely want to paint with it some more and maybe learn some tips and different things about gouache um, so that I can get better at it. As with anything, I just need to keep practicing and learning from others. I'm probably going to watch a few YouTube tutorials or some Skillshare classes on it. But yeah, now I'm just printing out this print to go right next to my calendar. But yeah, these two calendars will also be in my shop as well um, by the time this video goes up and I'll have them in any month you guys want or in blank. So you guys can check that out if you're interested. And that is my final setup for 2019. I'll definitely post more of my January pages on my Instagram and I'll also flip through all of them like usual in my next month's video. But before that, I will be putting up my 2018 bullet journal flip through. So if you guys are interested in seeing all my pages from my last year's journal, that video will be up very, very soon. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.